Okay, I think we're going to get started, so uh, let me uh, begin. My name is Michael Ward, Town Administrator here in Clinton, and on behalf of the Select Board and myself, I'd like to extend a warm welcome to you all on this beautiful day to our great town of Clinton to highlight literacy, literacy launch. I want to thank you for taking the time out of your day to celebrate with us, and a special appreciation to our honored guest uh, here behind me, uh, to Governor Healy and Secretary Tutwiler and Commissioner Johnston and Commissioner Kershaw, Senator Cronin and Representative Kilcoyne for uh, joining us and being with us. Improving literacy has profound effects on bettering people's lives at any age, but efforts made with students in early education can make a monumental difference by giving children the foundation to reach their full potential. Literally, Literacy Launch is making that happen here in Clinton. I want to congratulate Clint Public Schools on this recognition, but also for the importance placed on reading and literacy by the school committee, Dr. Meyer, and all of the hardworking teachers and staff educating our children each and every day. I am proud of the successes they are having with funding under this program. It is my pleasure to introduce our next speaker. I have been impressed by the work of the Healy Driscoll administration during their short tenure, especially their focus on municipal government. Early on, when they took office, one of the first initiatives was conducting listening sessions with local officials to seek out our opinions and listen to our challenges. They then took these issues and followed up with filing of the Municipal Empowerment Act, which contained many changes to help us do our jobs better. In addition, working with the legislature, the Healy Driscoll administration is supporting our schools with full funding of the Student Opportunity Act, increases to local aid for our municipal budgets, Chapter 90 money for roads, providing grant opportunities to allow us to innovate in technology and infrastructure improvements, funding for the opioid crisis, protecting firefighters from toxic gear, helping veterans to the HERO Act, initiatives to address housing crisis, and this list goes on and on with ways that this administration is providing municipal officials with the tools to serve the people of our communities. We thank you for all of your help and look forward to this continuing partnership. And ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Her Excellency Governor Mara Healy. Well, good afternoon, and thank you so much to our town administrator, Michael Ward. It's been uh, a pleasure and a, and a privilege to be able to work as partners. Um, I bring my greetings, uh, greetings from our Lieutenant Governor, Kim Driscoll, who is a former municipal official, and that's why we did those listening sessions, um, because it's our municipalities, our cities and towns, you're, you're on the front lines delivering uh, so many services to residents. One of those we're here to talk about today, and that's education. So we thank you for welcoming us to the great town of, of Clinton. And by us, uh, I want to acknowledge our, our team here as well. Secretary of Education, this is Pat Tutwiler. Um, he and I just had an opportunity to read to students, and, uh, and it was great. You're a much better reader than I am. I love that. Um, our Commissioner for Early Education, Amy Kershaw. Our, commission, our acting D, uh, DESE, we call it DESE, it's our Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. Commissioner Johnson is with us and uh, other members of our administration. We're also welcomed here today by our great principal, uh, Meg Silvio. Where are you? Where are you? Right here. Thank you so much um, for the wonderful tour and experience this afternoon. And thank you to members of your team. And to Superintendent Meyer, thank you very much for all that you are doing for the district. Um, I also see joining us, we have Jessica Tang from AFT. Thank you for uh, your, your, your work, our educators, uh, really on the front lines. We appreciate that. Neighborhood Villages, other organizations here today who are so involved in delivering services to families and to children across the state. So we really appreciate that. Um, look, kids, I am happy to be, I'm psyched to be here today to meet you. You're all in fourth grade, right? You're third grade? <laughs> it, oh, you got second. All right. And you guys are the fourth graders. All right. Well, I just, we were just with the first graders 
who were coming up, and um, it was wonderful to see them. It's wonderful to see you. Did you know that you live in a state, Massachusetts, that is number one in the whole country for education? The best in the whole country, Massachusetts. We're proud of that. And you can see why that is uh, from the dedicated professionals and teams that we saw just here this afternoon at Clinton Elementary. But you don't get to be number one or to stay number one unless you're focused, unless you're up to date, unless you're working in supporting schools and teachers and getting every student what they need, especially our youngest students, right? You guys deserve that, everything you need. And that's what we're doing here today at Clinton Elementary in partnership with our uh, Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. It's what we want for every classroom and for every student in this state. We want Massachusetts to be number one, not just for some students, but for all students. And one of the things that we're gonna talk about is a program that we created last year called Literacy Launch. We know how important literacy was, is, and we know how important um, being able to, to read is, and how that sets you up for success. So we're here today to uh, announce what is really exciting, this kickoff of Literacy Launch, and to talk about how schools across the state can be a part of it. I can't go any further, though, without acknowledging how this all is possible. You know, you have wonderful folks who represent you in our state legislature. You have with us today Representative Meg Kilcoin, whose mom and dad went to Clinton? My mom went to Clinton. Your mom, yes. okay, and she lives just down the road, but she's out there working hard for all of you. And we have our fabulous Senator John Cronin. Um, John is, um, John's a really special person too. He, uh, he not only worked with us on this, he worked with us on the HERO Act, which is the best, most comprehensive piece of veterans legislation that this state has ever seen. And we got that done this year. He's a veteran, of course, himself. So I mention them because the legislature approved $20 million to support this program uh, that we're kicking off. And districts like Clinton um, can apply for grants for this funding through a partnership we call the Partnership for Reading Success, or PRISM, Reading Success in Massachusetts. Um, in the first year alone, we know we're gonna be able to help 45 school districts. Now we know that early literacy is an issue right now nationally. It's something that is rightly getting a lot of focus. We have a generation of students that lived through a pandemic, were in school in a pandemic. Um, many kids were at home, some were, uh, if, especially for the youngest, uh, virtual school was a challenge. It was a challenge for their parents as well and the educators, we know. Um, so this is a major opportunity to address uh, what we need to address and to make sure that everyone has what they need in terms of the best materials, the best instruction, that educators have the best support and students are getting what they need. And uh, this week we also got some great news. The Biden-Harris administration, we talked about the state funding. Importantly, the Biden-Harris administration awarded Massachusetts more than $40 million, $40 million to support our literacy effort and related work over the next five years. So we are setting ourselves and most importantly, our students up for success, especially the second graders who you're gonna be, yeah, did you just start second grade? Is it harder than first grade? Yeah, no. <laughs> you're fine with it. You're just gonna go with it, it's good. Um, finally, Massachusetts, we're not only number one for education, we're number one for, for innovation. We're number one um, for the place to have a child. Number one for the place to raise a family. Number one uh, state to live in if you are a woman. Number one state in the country for quality of life. And I say that because it's important to know who we are and what we're delivering and what we're aspiring to affirm and work on every day. And it's also important because that doesn't just happen. It be happens because of caring people in policy making positions and caring people out there in the community, working hard together in partnership. We're a great team, Team Massachusetts, and today is a celebration of that. We're excited to move forward with literacy launch statewide um, so that not only are we the home to America's first public school and first public library, yeah, invented right here in Massachusetts. We're gonna be the first in literacy for generations of students to come, and that is a great thing. 
And taking it from here is going to be our um, great uh, Secretary of Education. I had the pleasure of uh, appointing him uh, just under two years ago. He's out there doing a terrific job, uh, working so hard. Secretary Pat Tutwiler. Okay, good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. How are you all feeling? Do you want to know how I'm feeling? No? A little bit? I am so energized right now. I am so excited to be here with you and at this school. And you know why else I'm excited? I just left an amazing first grade classroom. And I want to say something to everyone to sort of set the table uh, from jump. I realize that I probably exceed all of the size maxima for a first, uh, first grade classroom, but I think I missed my calling. That room was magical. Those students were amazing. The teachers were amazing in that classroom. And I, I credit the teachers in there. Uh, I credit uh, Dr. Meyer, the superintendent, Principal Silvio, for creating the conditions for that magic to happen in those classrooms. Congratulations. It is it's great to be here with everyone on this really momentous day in Clinton. Uh, and I know here uh, in Clinton you have leadership. Uh, we saw it down in the, the first grade classroom. Uh, we have leadership here that is dedicated to improving literacy. We know this because Clinton was one of 17 districts uh, in the state of Massachusetts who earlier received a grant to implement apple seeds which is a DESI-created Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, there'll be a quiz later, uh, created a curriculum that uh, provides evidence-based reading and foundational skills, and the teacher in that room was lauding that program for the kind of advancement they're seeing, uh, which is really wonderful. And this is what Literacy Launch is all about, celebrating progress like uh, we're seeing right here in Clinton, uh, and allowing us to deliver for students and educators who haven't yet had the chance to experience this forward progress yet. Uh, early literacy, as the governor said, uh, is one area, among others, where there continues to be a challenge and inequitable uh, 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 disparities. Uh, and this is, of course, national, but also right here at home in Massachusetts. However, in this state, we don't hide from these kinds of challenges. We confront them head on. And thankfully, for early literacy, we have the research backing to know what works and the partnership, and thanks to our partnership with the legislator, the resources to move in this deeply important area. The Healy Driscoll administration proposed literacy launch to permanently transform early literacy learning in Massachusetts reading from age three through grade three, giving schools and educators uh, the tools and resources we know work, including professional development and coaching, high quality evidence-based materials, and building out systems of support. I am grateful to be here to celebrate, as the governor mentioned, the $20 million we received in partnership with the legislature for this first year of this initiative. Now, second, third, and fourth graders, typically when someone says, $20 million, they applaud. So why don't you lead? Awesome. Um, that is a significant down payment on our students, on you uh, right here seated up front, as well as the future competitiveness uh, in Massachusetts. As the governor noted, applications are now open for districts uh, to apply for grants and support for things like early literacy screening assessments, uh, funding costs to cover uh, uh, positions like literacy coaches and reading specialists, and support to create partnerships with community-based preschool providers to align curriculum instruction and assessment. Now, on that note, the governor already introduced them, but you'll note that both the K-12 commissioner, uh, Commissioner Johnson, and the Early Education and Care Commissioner, Commissioner Kershaw, are both here today to celebrate with us. One of the most important parts of Literacy Launch is the cross-agency nature of the work. In addition to the robust work happening in the K-3 space, this is an effort to ensure that our pre-K scholars have access to developmentally appropriate evidence-based literacy strategies as well, regardless of the setting. So listen, we're, 
we're prioritizing literacy, early literacy, for the simple yet profound reality that establishing literacy skills is important not only for the remainder of a student's education, but it's really a foundational marker for the remainder of their life. And so we're committed to getting this right in the Commonwealth. And with Literacy Launch, we can permanently improve how students learn to read from now and years to come. Uh, and with that, I will now turn to Dr. Meyer, the superintendent of the Clinton Public Schools. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Tutwiler. You definitely have a, uh, a future in first grade if you want one. <laughs> Let me know. New furniture, that's yeah. <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> okay. All right, good afternoon. Uh, I'd like to thank Governor Healy, Secretary Tutwiler, Acting Commissioner Johnson, Commissioner Kershaw for taking time out of their busy schedule to visit Clinton Elementary School. While the pandemic created many challenges, I believe that the staff of Clinton Public Schools and Clinton Elementary in particular use these challenges as an opportunity to come together and emerge post-pandemic much stronger than we were. As a district, we immediately focused on re-engaging students. During the 22-23 school year, we were able to drop our chronic absentee numbers to well below our pre-pandemic numbers in 2019, and we were less than a third of the state average as a district. Additionally, we focused on strengthening Tier 1 curriculum through the adoption and implementation of high quality instructional materials. When the opportunity came to use Appleseed's early literacy curriculum with the support from the state, our Clinton Elementary School faculty made the decision to jump in wholeheartedly. Over the last few years, thanks to support from the state, we've been able to work with our implementation partner, TNTP, to build capacity, promote equity, and support early literacy by implementing this high quality curriculum with integrity. I'm proud of the work that has been done here in Clinton, and specifically the efforts that Clinton Elementary School has made to really focus on early literacy. I'm honored that the governor, secretary, and commissioners have decided to visit Clinton Elementary School. I think this is a nice recognition of the tremendous efforts that our faculty and staff have put into not only coming back from the pandemic, but to come back stronger than we were before. I'd also like to acknowledge CES Principal Megan Silvio, along with Assistant Principal Alyssa Piermarini, who really were the driving forces providing the vision for Clinton Elementary School as we emerged from the pandemic. And it's Principal Silvio, Assistant Principal Piermarini, and Assistant Principal Courtney Knoll, who continue to support this work to ensure that all learners are able to develop early literacy skills. And at this time, for the fun part, I'd like to introduce Ms. Silvio to introduce our student speaker. Before I introduce them, I just want to say that I am always proud of Clinton Elementary School, but today, like, my heart is probably bursting out because they so deserve this recognition. They come to, the students come to school every day and the staff come to work every day. They roll up their sleeves and they do the hard work. And so I want to thank you for um, recognizing that work and coming here and um, recognizing our students. So I'm going to call up our confident student leaders. They are both fourth graders. I have Emily Brunel and Femi Abuto. Come on up. Right. And they've prepared speeches that they're going to read to you about their experiences here at Clinton Elementary School. Yeah. So Femi, you're gonna go first? Appleseeds really helped me become a reader. It was fun and I loved learning the sounds. One thing I really liked about Appleseeds is that they gave us decodable readers and if I needed help, there was a spot in the back of the book to help me decode the words. Now I know so many more sounds and I can read chapter books. Someday when I'm a football player, I'll tell kids how important it is to read. Sometimes it can be hard to read, but apple seeds really helped me learn all of the sounds so that I could read fluently. When I was in second grade, I didn't know that PH could say S, but apple seeds helped me learn that. And then I could decode so many words, and now I love to read, 
and enjoy reading in my spare time, and it helps me learn a lot at school. You know what? I need the stool. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, um, thank you so much. Can't think of a better way to end this afternoon than to hear from Emily and Femi. Aren't you proud of those guys? That's awesome. It's not easy to speak, and you guys did that so well. Um, thank you to everybody who participated. Thank you, uh, I think, most importantly for everything that's to come with Literacy Launch. We're really excited about Massachusetts leadership once again, not only in education, but in literacy. This is why Massachusetts is great. It takes a team. Thank you all for being a part of it. With that, happy to take questions on topic. Right, as a former member of the Mass Association of uh, School Superintendents and Vice President-elect before I left, very well aware of the concerns that they raised. And uh, we're really, a, this is a grant program, it is an opt-in program, it is not a mandate, but I'll also say that it is stemming from very compelling evidence-based research over a period of decades that shows very clearly that uh, a, a, the evidence-based strategies that we're lifting up in this pro program support meeting the needs of all learners, right? And uh, it's our duty to really bring this forth and offer the opportunities around professional development, purchase of high-quality uh, instructional materials, uh, and supporting uh, aspiring teachers in uh, schools of education with learning the most effective way to reach all leaders. That, that's not something we're going to apologize for, and we're really going head on into this, uh, making this opportunity available for as many districts as we can. You know, our responsibility, and my responsibility as governor, particularly in a state where education is enshrined in our state constitution, is to make sure that we're providing the very best in terms of opportunities and that we're providing the very best in terms of support for students and teachers. So, you know, as Secretary Tutwiler said, um, these, this program um, is not a mandate. It's meant to be an option, and it's meant to build on the skills, the experience of educators, people who have been engaged in literacy work for a long time. It's meant to support, not to supplant. And I have a lot of respect and regard as a general matter for people who are proficient in their fields, and I have confidence that our districts and administrations and our educators uh, can all work together, supported by us in, in government to deliver what is, is the best. So, you know, appreciate the discussions. Again, nothing is foreclosed here, um, but I think it's really important that Massachusetts leads in this space, and I'm really proud. Not only are we number one in education, we're gonna be number one in literacy, and that means for all students uh, across all zip codes in Massachusetts. Thank you, everybody. Have a great afternoon.